So this presentation provides more detail on how to draw Lewis structures for molecular compounds. So the first step is to add up the total number of valence electrons for all the atoms in the molecule. Okay. So how you do that is, for example, in the molecule SiCl4, there's one atom of silicon that has four valence electrons, and there's four atoms of chlorine. Each one has seven valence electrons, so seven times four is 28. When you add 28 and 4, you get 32. The next step is to identify the um, atom that is central in the molecule. Usually it's the one that there's only one of, or it's closest to the atoms carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, or silicon on the periodic table. So in our example, um, silicon, SiCl4, Si is the central atom. So what's going to happen is the other elements are going to arrange themselves around the silicon. So we're going to continue working with SiCl4 as our example. So we're going to draw the molecule by writing the atomic symbol for the central atom, which is Si. And then we're going to encircle it with the four chlorines that are in the molecule. And we're going to join them to the central atom with a single line. That single line represents a bond, and it's actually a single bond. And those um, each a single bond represents one pair of electrons being shared. So in other words, each one of these single lines that I just drew is equivalent to two electrons. So the next thing that you need to do is add up the total of a number of electrons used in making bonds and subtract it from the total number available we figured out in the first step. So again, if we look at, we have Si, Cl4, so Cl, 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 and Cl. There's four bonds which means eight electrons were used up. Um, remember that we figured out earlier that the total number of valence electrons in this molecule is 32, and 32 minus eight is 24, so 24 electrons remain. The next thing you do is you use those leftover electrons, and in this case, remember it's 24 of them, to complete the octet of the atoms surrounding the central one. So again, back to SiCl4. There's our structure, and our valence electrons go in like this around the chlorine atoms, because again, they're not the central ones. Okay, and if you count all of those up, there actually is 24 electrons, okay? So, so in SiCl4, we put six electrons around each chlorine. So there's no electrons left in this example. If you do have electrons left, you do need to pair them up and place them around the central atom. If you didn't have enough electrons to give the surrounding atoms complete octets, you need to do a couple of things. Did you miscount or are there any electrons, or sorry, any, are any of the surrounding atoms elements from group one? So hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, and so on. Those elements um, don't need to have an octet. Okay, so one last thing, you need to check out the central atom. If the central atom is in group 14, 15, 16, 17, or 18, it does need to have at least eight valence electrons around it. Remember that a bond does count as two electrons. So if that central atom doesn't have eight electrons around it, you're going to need to make double and or triple bonds to help it um, have those eight electrons. So we'll do some examples that have something like that in it. All right, so we're going to try our first example. Remember, the first step is to figure out the total number of valence electrons in the molecule. Well, the way we do that is nitrogen has five valence electrons, hydrogen has one, and there's three hydrogen atoms in the molecule. So this structure has a total of eight valence electrons that we need to deal with. The second step, remember, is to identify the central atom. And the easiest way to really usually do that is it's the atom that you only have one of. So in this case, the central atom is nitrogen. Okay? And remember that the hydrogens are going to encircle the nitrogen. And you do have three of them. Okay? And remember that those lines right there represent single bonds. So the next step is to figure out how many electrons have I used up. So I've used up six of the eight, okay, so eight minus six. There's two valence electrons that need to go into that molecule somewhere. And they're not gonna go around the hydrogens because remember they don't need to have the octet around them. 
The nitrogen does, however, so those two valence electrons are going to go right there on the nitrogen. The next molecule that we're going to work with is the um, PBr3. And follow the similar sequence. Remember, total number of valence electrons in the molecule, five for phosphorus. You have three bromines. Each bromine has a total of um, seven valence electrons. So you're looking at a total of 26 valence electrons here. Okay. So again, central atom is phosphorus in this case. It's phosphorus because you only have one of them. And remember, the bromines are going to organize themselves around the phosphorus. Okay. Okay. So now let's figure out how many total we ha valence electrons we've dealt with. Okay, well, we do three bonds, so that's six. So 26 minus six is 20 valence electrons. So we're gonna, remember, we're gonna fill in the octets of the elements surrounding the phosphorus. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We have two valence electrons left. And remember that the, um, the next rule dictates, or the next suggestion dictates, that those are going to get paired up and get attached to the um, central atom. So they're going to go right there. Okay. All right. The last example that's on here is C2H4. And same deal. Carbon has two, car, sorry, carbon has four valence electrons. We've got two carbons, and hydrogen has one valence electron, and we have four of them. So total here, we're looking at 12, okay? So carbon, in this case, is the central atom, okay? And they're going to bond to each other like that. Now we're going to arrange the four hydrogens around it. One, two, three, and four, okay? And... Let's figure out how many um, electrons we've dealt with here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have two left. Now, those two electrons, you can't. They would have to be paired up. So this, um, you can't just put one on each carbon. So the best way to deal with those two electrons that are left is to actually put a double bond because remember the bonds represent um, a pair of electrons being shared. Carbon actually has a strong tendency um, to make double bonds and triple bonds. So this molecule ends up looking at, um, the way that structure is that I've just drawn.